Hey guys, uh, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. Past few videos, there's there's been a few complaints about uh, audio quality. So, as you can see here, I have my uh, Blue, Yeti, Blue Yeti microphone a little bit closer. Now, I will say, I went back and watched the videos on an iPhone, an iPad, a MacBook, and a desktop. The audio was coming through fine for me. So. Uh, twist the knob on your volumes if you're having trouble hearing. And if that doesn't work, then I just stick to reading the website or the documentation or something, I guess. Um, this video is a back to basics video uh, explaining why you should use SSL decryption. So, first things first, uh, for those of you that are new, uh, the two main protocols that are used for web traffic, um, and this is specifically just web traffic. I'm not talking about the underlying things like DNS and you know all that jazz. I'm talking specifically for the viewing of the web traffic. You have HTTP. Oops, it's too close. You have HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP is port 80. It's completely unencrypted. Um, very easy to inspect that traffic. HTTPS is using SSL encryption. Uh, if you ever go to your websites and you notice that there is an HTTPS and a little shield and all that jazz next to the URL, that means that your traffic's encrypted. You can't easily jump in the middle of that. Uh, for end users, that's important because that provides them a level of security lets you know that the contents on the site are secure, the information you're entering on the site is relatively secure. Um, for security professionals, it's a double-edged sword. And I say that because it's good. You're able to encrypt your traffic. You're able to keep the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of your information under the guidelines of what you need for your organization. But it's bad because majority of web traffic now is encrypted in some form. Now you're sitting here going, but Mike, that means that my stuff's secure. That means people can't see it. Yes and no. That means that whatever communication is taking place through that path is secure, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the traffic that, go that is going through that said communication is. Um, and by that I mean with majority of traffic being encrypted in some fashion now what other type of traffic traverses your firewall? Malicious traffic. Bad guy traffic. So just like your banking statement sites and uh, your investment sites and things of that nature are encrypted so are the connections that are going out from your machine that is helping spread malware or botnets or ransomware or any of that scare tactic stuff that you see. This is incredibly important because it's encrypted if you're not doing SSL interception or SSL decryption you have no idea what's traversing it. All you know is it's HTTPS, SSL, whatever traffic. You can't break it apart and actually see what it is. Which means as a security professional you are blind to possible nefarious or malicious traffic. So. With that being said, obviously FortiGates are incredibly powerful uh, security devices or appliances. Um, they have the ability to do what we call man in the middle or SSL intercept and um, it gives you the ability to break that encrypted tunnel, inspect the traffic and then send it on its way. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. There's a lot of appliances out there that can do it, whether it be a Gigamon or a FortiGate or a Palo Alto or some sort of web proxy like a specific blue code or you know anything like that. Um, what I'm going to cover with you today is specifically how you would go about um, doing a level of two levels actually, whether it just be certificate inspection or actual deep level um, inspection on a FortiGate. So, I'm gonna switch this over to my screen. Alright, so this is my handy dandy um, FortiGate 
it's a Ford Wi-Fi. It's what I use in my previous videos. So there's a there's a layer there. Let's see what password if I can remember what it is. Sweet. Okay. So this is my Ford Wi-Fi. Expired as hell. I have a basic policy here. This is where I was trying to do some from the last video when I actually showed the policy set, right? So we can delete this. So um, that was the, the policy from my virtual IP video. Anyway, so I'm going to create a basic out policy here. Outbound, oh, no, more specifically, HTTP, HTTPS outbound. And my source interface is inside. My outgoing interface is outside. And for the sake of the policy, we're just going to keep it incredibly simple. All, 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 all. But I'm only interested in HTTPS. This is the policy in the simplest of forms. It's created to let all sources to all destinations on the inside to outside zones for service HTTPS. That's 443 traffic. That's where all your encrypted traffic is. Accept it, NAT it, send it out the WAN interface. Okay. This policy as it stands cannot see the um, the encrypted traffic it will just allow it to pass if you want to actually be able to see that traffic on some level there's a couple of things you can do you can do certificate inspection what certificate inspection is is it's inspecting the certificate of the site or the traffic that's trying to traverse to try to gauge some information, glean a little bit of fact from it. You know, where's this going? Oh, this is a Skype search, so this must be Skype traffic, or this is Facebook, so it must be Facebook. And what that does is it lets you actually have a little bit more visibility than this policy would in its base form. But it doesn't give you the full picture, so there's still possible malicious traffic and things that could be traversing that. The next thing is deep inspection. Now what this does is the connection, and this is going to be an overly simplistic view of this, but, and I don't have an ability to draw, do I? No? Okay. Let's see here. We'll get real technical with it. So this is firewall. This is end user. This is firewall. And this is the web server. So what happens is your user traffic, this HTTPS encrypted, will go to the firewall. And it will terminate there. When you do deep inspection, your firewall acts as a man in the middle. So the traffic goes here. Well, I want to keep it red. Move on. Green. And then the FortiGate will build the other side to the server on behalf of you. Now what does that mean? That means it's encrypted from your computer to the FortiGate, which means the FortiGate can then decrypt it, observe it, inspect it, and then re-encrypt it and send it on as you to the server. And that's really the best way. Um, it's the only way you really are going to be able to have any real visibility into it, right? So um, this is a horrible drawing. I apologize, but it kind of gets the picture across, right? Now, there is a problem with doing um, deep inspection. And that problem is, is that when you do deep inspection, the certificate that is presented to the end user is the Fortinet certificate. And as you can see, your computer does not trust the FortiGate certificate by default. This is the built-in certificate for a Fort of Wi-Fi 61E. And what that means there is this is only really useful in organizations where you're able to control the certificates that are being presented. So what you would do is you would create a certificate using your Active Directory credentials or a server that's on your um, domain and then you would use that certificate when you present. So when you see SSL, SSH inspection, you come over here, we'll look at our deep inspection here. This is the default policy, it's read only, but as you can see it'll do all that jazz across the most specific items. Our custom one is the one that we can actually manage and uh, gives you a couple levels of um, 
information here, you can choose the actual certificate that you're using. So what you can do is you can actually upload a certificate to this. So if you run uh, Mike's Crab Shack or whatever, let's say you live at the beach and you have a website and you sell crab, crab meat, crab claws, whatever. Mike's Crab Shack. I can install a cert for Mike's Crab Shack here and put it as one of my trusted certificates for this computer. Or if it's, you know, company.local is your Active Directory certificate that you use, it's automatically trusted because it's part of your Active Directory. So you can present that instead. And what you get is a nice little green box here that says your connection is secure and it'll show you the certificate and say that it's valid so that's that's the only real catch when you do deep inspection is it breaks the connection and it provides whatever certificate the FortiGate has so if you don't define one that's actually a trusted cert by your machine or your domain or whatever environment you happen to be in you get those ugly alerts that are like hey you know heads up this isn't possibly a secure connection because Browsers are now smart enough to know that you're doing man in the middle. So that's the only real catch. But that's the gist of it, right? You know, you can do certificate inspection or you could do deep inspection. If you do deep inspection, just load a certificate that your computer or computers or domain or whatever your environment is trusts so that it'll, you know, flow without error. And then you get to enjoy the, the beauty of having true 100% visibility on your network. Because good traffic and bad traffic alike are going to utilize whatever's available. And with almost everything going encrypted, bad traffic's going to go encrypted. So if you're not breaking the chain in some fashion so you can expect it, inspect it, you're, you're missing the critical stuff that you need. So um, the video is a little bit more in depth than your average back to basics. But I just wanted to try to drop a little bit of the the concept there so that people can start thinking about it because if you're a cybersecurity professional or a security engineer or you're doing any level of security consulting and the environment that you walk into is not doing some type of SSL decryption they're not seeing the whole picture and I guarantee you their attack surface is significantly larger than what they think it is and it's your duty as a security professional to make sure they know that. Provide them the guidance and the knowledge they need so they can better protect their users' data or, you know, if it's a government, their people's data, their constituents. So, um, any questions, hit up the comments. Be more than happy to answer them. I'm fairly active in there. Uh, I never shy away from a debate. Uh, the last video, someone had some comments about the validity of some of the statements I have and we went back and forth I thought we had a very good conversation so um, I always look forward to reading the comments and uh, until next time you guys you know keep applying UTM keep breaking the traffic so you can see what's going on and you know keep help make the world a little bit safer from all those crazy cyber criminals out there that are out to get our data so until next time you have a good night